A disturbing number of people nowadays drink most of their water out of plastic disposable water bottles. Now the reasons for bottled water may vary from convenience to taste and perceived safety, but the promises of bottled water often don't live up to their claims. All right, so right off the bat, uh, no, this is not going to be a light hearted video, but it is important to watch this one because it is an absolute masterclass on social manipulation and corporate greed. Yummy, my favorite combo. <laughs> All right, so bottled water wasn't always normal, first of all. And like most hot new items in a marketplace, bottled water actually started out as a luxury item. The bottled water industry actually goes back to the 1700s when wealthy Europeans and Americans would go to these fancy bathhouses and they believed that the natural spring and mineral water from these spas had miraculous health benefits. The spas caught on to this and actually started selling their water so that their customers could take the mirror home with them. <laughs> I just love the idea that they're like bottling bath water and giving it to rich people to drink at home. It's probably not that though. It's probably probably just the water from the spring or something. Anyway, now around this time of the bathhouses, this was like the industrial revolution, okay? And things were really starting to ramp up in terms of pollution and contaminated tap water and diseases like typhoid and cholera started spreading through the municipal water supplies and it wasn't a good thing. So at this time, bottled water was seen as a much safer alternative for those who could afford it, of course. And this was a legitimately great invention that actually, no doubt, saved lots of people's lives. And in many cases, bottled water is still used in the same way today. There are a lot of places around the world where tap water isn't drinkable, and those people rely entirely on bottled water for the most part to keep themselves healthy. And we're gonna talk about that later in the video. But anyway, fast forwarding through all of history, um, at the beginning of the 20th century, the industry dipped a bit because sanitation methods made tap water a lot safer to drink. And this was about the time when bottled water was at its worst. It, it was transported in glass, which was expensive and heavy. Tap water was free and readily available. And so it wasn't until the 1970s when things really started to ratchet back up. Yes, that is right. Our old friend single-use plastic has entered the chat. The chemical company DuPont actually patented the first plastic bottle made out of this stuff, which I cannot pronounce. And this was literally how the bottled water industry was born. It also feels important to note that the DuPont family is now one of the richest families in America. Like, they're up there with the Waltons, Sacklers, and Butt family. Like, the richest of the rich. All right, so for some context, early on, bottled water became the villain of the environmental movement, all right? The low hanging fruit for governments and corporations to use as the symbol of bad environmentalism. Companies started making clothes out of old plastic bottles to show how sustainable they were. Cleanup efforts showcased the many plastic bottles that they found on beaches, and it sparked the reusable water bottle craze that we talked about in our Hydro Flask episode. Much like the plastic straw, their impact on the planet wasn't actually as bad as a bunch of other issues. For example, when we talk about ocean trash, the vast majority is actually from fisheries, not plastic bottles. But they have come to become the symbol of the plastic disaster that we have unleashed on planet Earth, and that has distracted everybody from a much bigger issues that companies like Coca-Cola and Nestle are very happy to continue to ignore. But first, how the heck did drinking water out of plastic bottles become so normal? Now, conveniently, over the next several decades, the safety of tap water was brought into question all of a sudden. And bottled water slowly started to become more appealing as an alternative again. And that, of course, was not a mistake. Now, before we get too deep into the drama, just want to thank all the members of our Patreon community who have made this video possible. The content that we make on YouTube is not particularly ad-friendly. Bashing brands apparently is not great for getting brands to sponsor you. So if you want to support what we do and make this channel free and awesome for everyone to enjoy, consider joining us over there. You get free exclusive content, early access to videos, and access to us. All right, back into the drama. 
Water companies went balls to the wall with their marketing tactics to convince consumers that their water is way better than what is coming out of your tap. To reinforce this idea, bottled water companies love to like really sink into the nature element of their product, right? They're always like pulling water from some pure mountain stream in, you know, like a Scandinavian country that you vaguely probably couldn't point out on a map. Literally, they're talking about Icelandic glacier water, natural spring water, natural artesian water, vapor distilled water, volcanic rock filtered water, water, and so on. Anyway, you get the point. The labels actually have pictures of these snow-capped mountains, babbling brooks, and that's all just to make it look a little bit more appealing. You've got Evian basically saying that their drinking water will turn you into a dancing baby in a suit, uh, which is somehow a good thing. Liquid Death, which has the cool factor. We made a whole other video about them too, if you're interested. And of course, my personal favorite, Earth's Finest Water, AKA, Fiji water. Now remember, all of these companies are spending a lot of money trying to convince you that their water is the best and the purest on planet Earth. When really, basically, it's the same as what comes out of your tap for free. One of my favorite examples of this is when Fiji, in 2006, ran a full page ad that says, the label says Fiji because it's not bottled in Cleveland. Now the city of Cleveland did not respond super kindly to that, understandably. Fun times in Cleveland again. Still Cleveland. They then went and did their own tests and found that their municipal water supply was actually safer than Fiji water because it contained less arsenic. <laughs> you gotta love it. Yeah, so in many cases, your bottled water isn't actually that unique. Why is this? How is this possible that bottled water can be so similar and yet marketed in such a different way? Bottled water is governed by the Food and Drugs Act and the only real requirements are to make sure that there aren't any dangerous levels of arsenic, lead, and coliform bacteria because, you know, that would kill people. But there are no limits on any other types of contaminants in bottled water. Tap water in Canada, on the other hand, is highly regulated by the health department and undergoes regular testing to ensure its safety. And the test results are completely accessible to the public. In many cases, these companies are basically stealing tap water, bottling it, and then bragging about how much better it is to the people they stole it from. So what do they actually do? Well, this was a question I had, and turns out very minor things to enhance the taste, which includes filtering out things like chlorine and stuff like that, and a basic process of reverse osmosis. And I hope that at this point, you're starting to think, this is really messed up. This is a weird industry. Why do humans do shit like this? Well, because of money. The business model of bottled water is phenomenal. You find water from a resource which you get for basically pennies, and then you sell it back to the same people for a profit. That is why in 2021, the bottled water industry was valued at over $283 billion USD. Waiting for this truck. Why don't street sweepers just take a day off when I'm trying to record? Oh dear God. All right, so a little recap here. The plastic situation, pretty bad. The fact that the product itself is a lie, also pretty bad. But there is actually one more part of this story that is even worse. These massive billion dollar corporations are literally trying to take our water hostage. Despite being one of the original basic human rights, these companies have more access to water sources than individuals do. For example, you've probably heard headlines about how Nestle was caught bottling and selling water in drought stricken areas like British Columbia and California amidst water restrictions for everyone else. But this is old news, right? Because, you know, they've been blamed for sucking wells dry in Florida, Maine, California, Michigan, and on indigenous land too. And Nestle and other companies get away with this in three main ways. Number one, they take advantage of outdated regulations. Two, they target vulnerable communities, and three, they present their product as a necessity. In Canada, companies take advantage of the fact that water regulations are quite outdated and confusing. Water was managed by the federal government until 1930, when the responsibility transferred
transferred to the provinces, which is like our version of states. This gave them the right to sell their water resources to whoever they wanted to. And the thing is, there is still a ton of legal ambiguity here that allows companies to extract water for cheap prices on expired permits. For example, in Ontario, Nestle extracted water from Six Nations land and paid the province about $500 Canadian per million liters of water, but they didn't pay the Six Nations anything. Now this sounds like just old fun exploitation, but many Six Nations families actually don't have any drinking water. And this is really only 90 minutes outside of Toronto, which is in one of the countries in the world that is consistently ranked as one of the best places to live. But then, then it gets even worse because you start thinking about like just basic math and like I took one stats class when I was in university. If you're buying a million liters of water for $500 and you think about what one liter of water must cost in a grocery store, they gotta be making bank. So how did they get away with it? How have we been brainwashed into thinking that bottled water is normal? Well, marketing, of course, you probably saw that coming. These companies are amazing at presenting themselves as heroes in the communities that they're a part of. When they move into a new community in particular, they exaggerate how many jobs they're going to provide. This is a huge thing. Then they make donations to all your local Boy Scouts and soccer teams, and they spend a ton more on lobbying. This is getting the federal and state politicians to let them do whatever the hell they want. One example of this is in the state of Maine, where absolute dominion laws are set up, which means that whoever has the biggest straw can suck out as much water as possible. And if you're thinking there is a sex joke in there somewhere, there is. Because at the time that this was happening, the head spokesperson for Nestle in the area just happened to be married to the state governor's chief of staff, which is like not a good look if you're exploiting people's water supply. Now, I know this is dark, it's kind of annoying, you feel like you're watching one of those disaster documentaries on Netflix, but there's one more one that I just wanna share with you because I think it's important and it's often overlooked. These companies have found one of the most malicious ways to exploit human need for water through disaster relief. In Haiti and other places affected by hurricanes and other natural disasters and stuff like that, they enter the market with relief which is their bottled water. And then they cement themselves as the only source of clean drinking water into the future. I am sure that many of you have been to countries or live in countries. Yes, I do. Where the drinking water comes in those big plastic jugs. And almost all of those jugs are going to be provided by Nestle or Coca-Cola or whatever company happened to be there when the water supply became contaminated. There are literal generations of people in countries all over the world whose only water resource comes from one of these companies. And if we are not careful, we might end up in the same boat. Now, we warned you, this video is gonna be bleak, right? We, we gave you the reality when you clicked on it, <laughs> all right? There's no catfish here. You just knew that you were gonna be eating the bottom feeder. Now the positive end to this story is that there is thankfully a lot of ways to work around bottled water. If you live in a place that has clean drinking water coming out of your tap, you can just drink that shit straight up. If you feel a little bit squicked out about maybe the situation where you live, we have filter technology. Today, there is a plethora of ways that you can filter your water. We made another episode on Future Proof Health about Brita filters, which was very interesting if you are curious or interested in that as well. And remember that if you do need to use bottled water because that is your situation, do not feel bad. Just hate Nestle like us instead. <laughs> and remember that no matter what the claims are, your bottled water is just a slightly different version of whatever water you happen to have accessible to you. And if you have a different circumstance in your life, please let us know what's going on and leave your comments down below because we do respond to as many as possible. Thank you so much. Hopefully you're not depressed. We'll see you in the next one.